Ciao amici, benvenuti nel mio canale. Oggi voglio parlare di un grande romanzo italiano, Il deserto dei tartari, di Dino Puzzati. È un romanzo molto poetico, è allegorico, ma è anche letterale. Non sono un esperto di letteratura italiana, ma posso dire che questo romanzo mi piace moltissimo. Some months ago I told you about The Castle by Franz Kafka and this novel that we are going to explore today is a direct descendant of that other wonderful text. There are mainly two reasons why I wanted to look at this novel by Dino Buzzati. The first one is that this novel was recommended to me by a guy by the name of Jorge Luis Borges. You may have heard him mentioned uh, maybe two or three times in, in this channel. And the other one is that this year New York Review Books published a new translation under a different title. The title is The Stronghold. We're going to explore that in a couple of minutes. So I first heard about this novel. I'm going to tell you how back in the year 2006 and I have finally read it. It's better late than never. And hence this video that you are so kindly watching, my friend. So what do you say? Let's go to the desert and let's see what we can find there. So the first thing that we should explore, I think, is the title. You may be thinking, Jorge, isn't, what do you mean the stronghold? Is, wasn't that titled the Tartar Steppe? Yes, it was titled the Tartar Steppe, but it turns out that Dino Buzzati intended for the original title of this novel to be La Fortezza, which literally means the fort. So now we have this new title right here. And the new edition includes a really nice uh, afterword by the translator Lawrence Venuti, And he actually tells us a little bit about his rationale as to why he chose to go with the stronghold as a title instead of maybe something like the fort or the fortress and other options that he was considering. But in any case, if you look at the title that we have now, the stronghold, it ties the novel more closely to its parent, which is Franz Kafka's The Castle. So we're going to explore this in a little bit more detail uh, in a few minutes. Let's look at the situation first that the novel presents. And believe it or not, it's rather easy to uh, summarize. We have a hero, his name is Giovanni Drogo, and we hear about his first assignment. Okay, He is sent to the Fortezza Bastiani, and he's like really excited about this first commission that he has had, the Fortezza Bastiani being, of course, the stronghold of the title. And this Fortezza is located in a very remote place. It's actually pretty much a desert. Hence the title, okay, the original title, Il Deserto dei Tartari, the Desert of the Tartars, literally. So the soldiers at the Fortezza basically live in a constant state of expectation because there's an enemy, the Tartars, who may attack at any moment. But here's the thing, time goes on and the attack just doesn't seem to be happening. Now, even if you have not heard of Dino Buzzati or Il Deserto dei Tartari before, you have probably made a connection already with a masterpiece of 20th century literature that also deals with this concept of an impending conflict. I am referring, of course, to Waiting for the Barbarians by J. M. Kutsia, one of my favorite authors and one of my favorite novels, too, so you may hear me talking about it in the future. So Kutsia's novel was actually influenced by The Stronghold, And the connection between the two is actually rather obvious because both of them were influenced by the poem Waiting for the Barbarians by Cavafy, Constantinos Petru Cavafis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the poem to the description of this video because I would like to recommend it to you and I think it would be fantastic if you read it. It's not very long. But uh, basically what happens in the poem, what the poem explores, is the power of the notion of the enemy, quote-unquote. Even if this enemy is not real, even if it is fabricated, just the fear and the expectation are enough to give structure to a whole group of people, to an entire society sometimes. And in Buzzati's novel, it is really this concept of the enemy that upholds the entire structure and the entire life of the Fortezza. It gives a purpose, it may be a precarious purpose, but it's a purpose after all to the lives of the people who live there. And that is the whole point of the connection.
There are many connections when you read this text, okay? So many people have, of course, mentioned the castle. That is an evident link that you have between the two novels. We're going to explore that in a little bit more detail soon. But as I read The Stronghold, I kept thinking about another great text by Kafka, and that is the short story, The Great Wall of China. Because there you also have this idea of a group of people who are devo devoted to a dubious task that gives some kind of meaning to their lives. You also have the idea that there may be an attack at any moment from, as they call them, the people from the north. So there's that there, tying the two texts also. But as I read it, I was also thinking of a novella by Henry James, a novella that is about waiting, basically. And you may have already known or, or guessed the title here. I am talking about the beast in the jungle, this story about this man who thinks that something wonderful is going to happen in his life at any moment. I'm not going to say more. All I'm going to say is check them out, whether you decide to read The Stronghold or not. The Great Wall of China by Franz Kafka and The Beast in the Jungle by Henry James are really excellent stories in and of themselves. So let's talk about allegory. Okay, I think this happens with Kafka also. It is really difficult to read a text like The Stronghold, just as it is difficult to read Kafka, sometimes even maybe impossible, not in an allegorical manner. Allegory is really something that is staring right in your face uh, as you read these texts. And I personally found two salient themes here. And when I say personally, in this case, what I mean is really personally, because these are personal ways that I found to read this text. When we read, we are basically bringing our whole life experience to the text. So I think it's not really an exaggeration to say that when we read a text, we actually read ourselves into it. And that is what I did in the case of The Stronghold, because that happens especially if you ask me when we are dealing with something that has a very obvious a salient allegorical dimension and that is definitely the case here. So the first theme that I wanted to explore when it comes to this allegorical type of reading is the dichotomy of expectation versus reality. Okay, I think this is something that we can all uh, relate to at some level or another. Sometimes there is an abyss, really, between our expectations and the reality of a thing, especially if we have unrealistic expectations, as I tend to do. So Giovanni Drogo is like so excited at first, right, that this is his first commission, it's his first assignment. But then when he gets to the Fortezza, he realizes that he is disappointed, to say the least. This is not at all what he had in his mind when he signed up for this thing and he decided to go. So this is really human, I think. This is something that happens to most of us. I think most of us really have a little bit of Don Quixote to us, some more than others. I have Don Quixote in me, like, all over the place. But I think we do have a tendency, most of the time at least, to romanticize things. And this is most evident uh, when you think about an example, when we talk about professions, right? We are encouraged to choose a profession at a very early age, or at least to think about it. I mean, how many of us have been asked when we were kids, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? And sometimes, even at the point in your life when you actually get to make that decision, when you're maybe like 16, 18, depending on your situation, I, I think that, you know, most of the time we have no idea really what we are getting into. And that's where I see the important role that faith uh, plays in our life. I, I don't mean faith in a transcendent manner, in this case in a religious or spiritual aspect, but the kind of faith that you exercise when you get into your car or when you go inside an elevator, that kind of thing. Only much more important than that when you're deciding, okay, this is what I'm going to dedicate my life to, this profession right here. And, of course, you know, you, we may still love what we do, but I would say that most of the time our expectations were quite uh, higher than the reality. Maybe they were even unrealistic or maybe even romantic. And the same thing can happen in uh, the realm of relationships, for example. Now, I do want to say I absolutely love my job and I am really, really happy with the relationship that I am in. That doesn't really take anything out of that. But what I'm saying is that most of the time we have that tendency to go into something with this idea of something that is going to be wonderful and so romantic and that everything is going to be perfect. This idea of heroism that you can see in a character like Giovanni Drogo. And the other thing that I think is very similar to the one that I have just shared with you and that I also saw in Franz Kafka's The Castle, so you can watch that video that I did and hear me talk a little bit more about this, is that as I was reading The Stronghold, I felt that this novel really captured and, and summarized my experience as an immigrant perfectly. 
okay the different stages the different steps that are described for example we have the excitement at first then we have the disappointment or the reality check if you want to give it another name then the homesickness which is something that Drogo feels in, in the novel the helplessness and finally the adaptation or the resignation that is exactly what happened to me as an immigrant and it had to do exactly and precisely with this idea of expectations versus the reality when I learned that I was going to move to a different country I was so excited and so happy about it because I was romanticizing the destination I thought I was going to move to this wonderful paradise where everything was going to be wonderful and just perfect and I was going to be the center of attention everybody was going to be paying attention to me because I was the foreigner I was interesting etc and when I encountered the reality I, I had to tell myself Jorge uh, you're not moving to Disneyland okay this is a different thing so you have to be realistic when it comes to that that is the reality check after that I felt homesick so by the same mechanism I began to romanticize my native land, the past. I began to remember all of the wonderful things about it and maybe leave aside conveniently the things about it that were a little bit difficult, you know, the difficulties of, of living in the place where I came from. Uh, so I romanticized my native land, I wanted to go back, but I couldn't. I mean, technically I could have done that, but it would have been very difficult for me. I was very young, I was 16, I would have had to start all over again. But I felt that helplessness that I was mentioning before, this idea, I cannot go back. And then time kept passing and eventually I realized that I just didn't want to leave the place where I was at the moment. I had come to see this place as a home. You could say maybe that I have two homes, but you see what I'm saying, right? That adaptation and that journey, that journey of the immigrant, the experience of the immigrant, or at least the experience that I had as an immigrant, because it's not the same for everybody, is something that I so perfectly described in The Stronghold. So that's why I had a, such a personal connection with this novel. So I talked about the idea that you can compare this to The Castle by Franz Kafka. So let's look at that at least uh, briefly, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a wonderful little thing that you can find here in the back cover description. It's from a review for Time. And the critic says, The stronghold follows the style, mood, and architecture of Kafka's castle. The story of a man struggling hopelessly to enter a stronghold in whose depths, could he but fathom them, lay faith and stability. The difference is that Butsati's hero struggles from within the stronghold itself. So in the stronghold, Butsati seems to be asking the following question. What if you were able to get to the castle? and then you couldn't get out. Have you considered this option in the first place? Butsati is asking us. Maybe the castle is not such a wonderful place after all. You spend years and years trying to get to this place, but nothing really guarantees that you are going to like it. And then, you know, you may get there and be completely disappointed. In other words, these are some questions that I asked myself as I was reading this novel. What is worse than not getting what you want? Getting exactly what you want and then realizing that you don't really want it after all. More tears are shed over answered prayers than unanswered ones, as goes that phrase uh, from that Truman Capote uh, novel that was attributed to Saint Teresa of Avila. But I believe it's not by Saint Teresa of Avila, but that's another story. But you know what I'm saying. So that is something that I wanted to comment on when it comes to comparing uh, and putting to dialogue, as I always say, a novel like The Castle and another one like the stronghold. So I want to share with you now a couple of quotes so that you get an idea of what you can find in terms of the content and in terms of the style. The first one can be found on page 54 and uh, just listen to this. It has to do with I would say the poetic style of, of the novel and the uh, impressionistic type of images that you can find. And the striking images, you know what I mean by impressionism in, in, in that sense. So listen to this. The guards coming on duty had lowered their weapons, and one by one they moved toward various parts of the fortezza. The cadence of their footsteps on the snow made a dull noise, but the music of the fanfares flew skyward. Then the walls, already besieged by night, soared slowly towards the zenith, however implausible this might seem, and from their utmost edge, framed by streaks of snow, white heron-shaped clouds began to break away and navigate through the sidereal spaces. So it's really beautiful right here. And then the other one that I wanted to uh, share with you has to do with the allegorical dimension of the text and even with the existentialist aspect of it because that is definitely a word that you can use when you are talking about this novel right here. So 
The more time passed, the more significance the fort lost. In days of yore, perhaps it had been an important garrison, or at least it was considered such. Now, with its force reduced by half, it was just a security barrier, strategically excluded from every war plan. It was maintained only so that the border wouldn't be left undefended. The possibility of some threat from the northern plain wasn't acknowledged. At most, a few nomad caravans could arrive at the pass. What would become of life there? It became obvious that the hopes of the past, the soldierly illusions, the expectation of an enemy from the north, were nothing but a pretext to give meaning to life. Now that the possibility of returning to civil society existed, those tales seemed like childish obsessions. So you can see a little bit of the style, the themes, and the approach that Dino Buzzati is uh, sharing with us in this novel. So uh, before, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned the name of Jorge Luis Borges, as I uh, usually do. So there is a Borges connection, and we are going to explore that right now, my friend. So it turns out that Borges included the stronghold, Il Deserto de Tartari, in his Biblioteca Personal. This is huge, okay? This is a collection of the most important texts that he had encountered in his entire life. So you can find that uh, in, in this book, Biblioteca Personal. So I'm going to read you what Borges uh, shares with us and tell you a little bit about what this uh, little prologue says. It's quite short. It's very brief, uh, even compared to other prologues that Borges has in this collection of Biblioteca Personal. I translated this into English to give you a little bit of an idea. So he gives us some biographical information about Dino Buzzati. Then he says, his vast body of work, not infrequently allegorical, exudes anguish and magic. Those are wonderful things, anguish and magic. Then he tells us a little bit that uh, Buzzati recognized the influence of Poe, right? And the Gothic novel also. Of course, critics have mentioned Kafka, he says that too. He tells us a little bit, or just mentions, basically, the film adaptation by Valerio Surlini. The cast, by the way, in that film is just amazing. I encourage you to look it up. It was made in 1976, and unfortunately, I was not able to see it. If I had been able to see it, you can be sure that I would have shared uh, my ideas on it with you. And then Borges says, the setting of Kafka's novels is deliberately gray and mediocre, and it is characterized by bureaucracy and tedium. That is not the case with this novel. There is an expectation, but it is that of an important battle, feared and desired. Dino Buzzati, in these pages, takes the novel back to the epic, which was its original source. The desert is real and symbolic. It is empty, and the hero expects multitudes. So I think these are good words, and uh, just to tell you, you know, this novel comes really highly recommended from Borges himself. So I always like to look at these books that he recommended or that he considered to be great. And of course, that gives me the opportunity to include a Borges connection, which is something that I always enjoy doing. So, uh, bottom line, I was expecting The Stronghold to absolutely blow me away. I am going to say it did not do exactly that, but I still enjoyed this novel immensely. Okay. Once again, expectations versus reality. I think this is all connected right here. It is a novel that actually gave me great pleasure. I absolutely love allegorical reading, and if you're looking for that type of reading, this is a very rich text. Uh, Dino Buzzati is not just channeling Kafka. Okay, this is something that many people may accuse him of, but there is just intertextuality going on. This is a dialogue, it is an homage to, to Kafka, but it's not the same. You're going to find many things in the stronghold that you would not find in basically anything that Kafka wrote, because they are completely different authors in many ways, even though there is a dialogue that you can have between them. I would say that the stronghold is really a wonderful, unforgettable depiction of solitude, of expectation and about that need that we have as human beings to give meaning to our lives, to find the purpose, right? That is so human and you find that in The Stronghold and that is one of the many things that make this a uh, memorable novel. So based on this experience, I, I am going to read more by Buzzati, okay, for sure. I really want to explore his other works. This is the most famous one, but I always do that. When I read something that is famous by an author that I had not read before, I always have that question in my mind, what are his or her other works like? So I do want to explore that. And before I leave, I just wanted to send a special hello to my friend Marinella, who is from Italy. So I just wanted to say that. Do you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes? 
those were my two cents on the stronghold Il Deserto dei Tartari by Dino Pozzati. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful day. Grazie mille. Arrivederci.